I'm not sure how I've pulled this off, but I've been keeping a pretty big secret for quite a long time, and today is a day to fill you guys in. Hey everyone, back with another episode of Stuff and Things. This is a secret that I've been keeping for quite a while now. I've been keeping it under wraps literally since I bought the Toyota Tacoma. You guys have probably been following along to the whole build series of my 21 Tacoma from suspension, wheels, tires, to bumpers, lighting accessories, and all of the quick camping trips that I've already done in this truck. I did get some questions early on about this video that we're talking about today. I got questions about why I did specific modifications and now it probably makes a lot of sense to you guys. So sitting right behind me is my brand new Series 6 Kimbo Camper from KimboLiving.com. I have covered these campers just a little bit on my channel in the past and I am so incredibly stoked to now have this thing on the truck and we are of course going to be living out of it for a little while now. For those of you who are not familiar with this thing sitting behind me right here, I highly recommend you go and check out those older videos. We did a full breakdown of basically how these things are made at the Kimbo factory. I also did a little camp trip with my friend and the designer and creator of Kimbo, Mark King. And I have just been a huge fan of this company and these products for quite a long time now. So my brain is gonna be kind of scattered throughout this video, but I'm gonna try to keep it short. If you're looking for a detailed overview, you can check out some of the older videos. Today, we're gonna slowly ease our way into it. I'm gonna show you guys how I have my truck set up, how I have the camper set up initially. We'll talk about some specs, some options, some pricing. And then in some future videos, we're really gonna get into the nitty gritty of how it is traveling traveling and living out of a Kimbo camper. Now I've already covered the truck quite a lot in some previous videos, but we're gonna start this off with a quick walk around to give you guys like the real information about why I built the truck the way that it sits right now. And of course, it was all about carrying around the Kimbo. All right, so here we have my 2021 Toyota Tacoma Axis cab. That was the first big decision when kind of starting on this project. I knew I wanted the six foot bed. One, because I just like the aesthetics of the Axis cab. It looks more like a truck than the four door Tacomas, but mainly for the larger bed to haul more gear and of course the Kimbo camper now. Now I'm not gonna list all of the mods. You can find a full detailed build list over on my website, cyproductions.com slash cygarage. But some of the ones that are very important for the Kimbo, starting up front here. We have an ARB twin compressor hidden behind the grill here on a running for tacos mount, and that is important for a reason which we will see in the back. Up front and in the rear, I am running Fox 2.5 DSC suspension, so really beefy suspension. I have actually upgraded the springs in there too. We took the stock spring that come with that kit and upgraded them to 650 pound springs on each side. Now in the middle, something that you guys cannot see, but I do have 529 gears on this truck. Initially, it was to push around the big old 35 inch by 12 and a half inch wide tires, and it does great for that. However, gearing like that makes pulling around a camper like this super convenient. I'll give you guys some of my driving impressions with this thing on the truck in a future video, but so far I am super happy with how this thing drives. So then coming to the back, again, Fox 2.5 DSC suspension back here. These are actually made for a Toyota Tundra, so we flip the reservoir around and it gives me an extra inch of down travel. It's just beefier, kind of better suspension overall than just regular Tacoma suspension. For the springs back here, I'm running the Deaver Stage 2 Expedition Leaf Pack, so I believe these are about 650 on each side. And then the icing on the cake, right in here we have the Firestone Ride Right airbags and the Daystar cradles. Those things are crazy important because when you're putting a lot of weight in the back of a truck like this, it's going to squat down a little bit. Because the suspension without the airbags is so beefed up already, the truck honestly didn't squat a whole lot. I have roughly 40 PSI in each of those bags right now and I can pump them all the way up to 100, but I don't want the ride to be super stiff and rigid in the back. Again, I'm really surprised with the way the truck drives and feels with the Kimbo on the back here. Now when it comes to actually loading up this camper, it was a little bit more of a project than a standard Tacoma. These Kimbos were designed to fit in a regular Toyota Tacoma bed. If you do have the four-door version of this truck, you can just take your tailgate off or leave it down. Most people will put the Kimbo in and take the whole tailgate off. I, of course, went with the Axis cab, so I still have my tailgate on there. I'm still running my C4 swing out bumper, and this is an idea that I've had from back in like October or whenever it was, and now it's 
it's finally sitting here. It all came to fruition and I'm super happy with it. So again, for the fitment, my truck was a little bit more difficult to get this camper on because of how I have it set up. This truck is quite a lot wider than a regular Tacoma and we found out about that very quickly. These wheels have a negative 18 offset coupled with those chunky tires on there and you can kind of tell how close the truck comes to the actual support legs of the camper. It fit, we got it to work, but it did take a little bit of finesse to get this thing on there. Also, the roof rack. I'm running the Prinsu roof rack because it is one of the most low profile racks out there. I've got my Diode Dynamics 42 inch light bar on there. That's something that I absolutely want to have on the truck because when I drop the Kimbo and I'm running a tent for the summertime, I wanna have storage up there, always wanna have the light bar on there. So I wanted to space the Kimbo up just a little bit. If I set it flat on the bed, these support members that come across would be insanely close to this roof rack it would probably work but I want a little bit of wiggle room in there that way if I slam on the brakes really hard or hit a big bump anything like that the Kimbo will kind of shift around a little bit and I didn't want it slamming down on the light bar or the roof rack so how did we actually get this thing to fit on here with the legs of the camper down on the ground you can jack this thing up pretty dang tall again my truck is lifted and it's a lot higher than a standard Tacoma so we actually ended up putting it on blocks that way it sat just a little bit higher we had more clearance I have tested it now that I've built a new platform for the Kimbo and I can actually remove it and put it on the truck pretty easily now but for the first test fit we weren't quite sure now if I pop open my swing out this is where we ran into kind of an issue but it was a pretty easy fix so the swing arm locked into a 90 degree angle here fits fine underneath the side of the camper and between the support legs as well however all of these accessories do not so what i had to do took me maybe like 10 15 minutes i unbolted my spare tire set it aside as well as the mount behind there i removed all of these accessories max tracks roto packs and the mount and then i was able to easily back this thing into place with the fitment of this i did have to remove the crossbar that sits on the back of the bed here that is something that of course i am going to have to install when i put the diamondback cover back on here but for now that thing is removed and that gives you just enough clearance to make this this thing fit just so perfectly in the bed of a Tacoma. Now coming to the back here for the actual clearance, when I was at Kimbo picking up the camper, we had a little bit of an issue because on the newer Tacomas, the 21, it may have started in 20, the wheel wells inside of here are not completely straight up and down. They're angled out a little bit. So the pieces of wood that we kind of cut to fit underneath here, it didn't sit flush all the way down to the deck of the bed. So there was a little bit of a gap and it just didn't look quite right. So we ended up putting a really big, almost six inch platform in here just in order to kind of get me out of the shop. From there, I went to visit my buddy Danny and I have to give a huge thank you to my friend Danny and his brother-in-law John. These guys helped me drop the Kimbo so we could pull out that platform because it was just sitting a little bit too tall. It didn't look quite right and to make this thing extra safe we wanted to build a custom platform for it. So as you can see here we took that six inch platform, broke it all down and kind of just restructured it using the same wood. We made it about three inches so it clears my bed stiffeners. It gives me plenty of clearance up on the front roof rack and then and I lined it with this horse mat, which gives it a little bit of flex to it. It's going to protect the bottom of the camper a little bit. And overall, it's just gonna make the ride a little bit more cushioned because you can't really feel the flex of this when you step on it, but when you have something that weighs between 950 and 1,000 pounds like the Kimbo, that little bit of rubber will flex and it just makes for a great base for this thing. So we cleaned that whole platform up. I'm super happy with the way this thing turned out. I painted the sides. We got the horse mat across the bottom and then the front face of it it looks like this is actually a part of the camper and that's exactly what I was going for so once we got the Kimbo back down on this new platform there are ratchet straps in each corner I'm using the stock d-rings down here we ratchet that into place there are little yellow bumpers to protect the strap from chafing over time we got those in each corner in both the front and the rear what's also cool about having this in an axis cab is that if you don't want to pull down on the ratchet strap and bump into your door you can simply open the rear door of the access cab and then get full access to that right there. So this thing works absolutely perfect for an access cab. 
Now let's just get right into the walk around. Of course, you guys know all about the legs now. There are different mounts. If you're putting this on a Tundra, you can get them extended and you can even get extensions that will drop down a little bit. That way you don't have to use blocks like we used while we were loading this thing up initially. You can actually remove these support legs, but I'm actually starting to like them. It just looks crazy like a future space pod, a lunar lander, and that is actually why I named the truck the Satlander. It's a truck for overlanding, and with the Kimbo in the back, it looks like a lunar lander. So, kind of a double meaning play on words, just like the Sat van. Now, moving forward, right here we have a vent for the fridge, which we will check out on the inside. All of the windows around the Kimbo are double pane, so really great for insulation. They click out into place, so you have three different levels of adjustment. Those are very similar to the ones on my van as well, so I know those are going to be awesome. And then moving forward just a little bit more, you will see these little LED lights. There are a ton of diodes in these things, and these are motion sensor lights with a few different brightness controls, and they are solar powered, so they're not wired in anywhere. You can turn them off if you are driving at night. I have I have not used those quite yet, but tonight, Ashley and I are out here camping, so we're gonna put those to the test. Coming around to the front of the Kimbo, something that is super unique with these campers is that they have a window right on the front. This is difficult to accomplish with campers because obviously when you're heading down the road, there's a lot of force being put on the front of this thing. All of these Kimbos are designed and engineered in a way that they are super watertight. They are pressure tested, they have great seals all around, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how long I can actually travel around in this thing without doing any maintenance to it because the build quality is just amazing they're all hand built in bellingham washington and again you guys can check out the whole build series of these kimbos on the channel now working our way back the kimbo if we actually look behind the axis cab here this is an option on my kimbo this one is essentially fully loaded so this is something that you can opt out of it's probably not something i will use but this is actually an access hole for an air conditioning unit so this thing has ac and if i just pop that panel off there that is where the ac will exhaust and right underneath over here is where the ac will intake there's a little drip valve right back here too kind of hard to tell because the fit is so tight but this thing has air conditioning which is insane right here we have another one of those led lights just to the left of the ladder we have a port for shore power so i can actually plug this thing in and use regular 120 outlets and usb chargers and a lot of other accessories while we are camping i will probably never use this because i like being off grid kind of like where we're at right now up here in the pacific northwest so how can we stay off grid in the kimbo good question Let's go up to the roof. So here we are on top of the Kimbo. As you can tell, I can stand on here. These things are built out of aluminum and all of the walls are about an inch thick with some proprietary parts and things going on in there which I can't really show. But they're basically riveted together and sandwiched together and it makes the structure super rigid and durable. It gives you the opportunity for repair and it holds my weight which is awesome. So right here if you caught my older Kimbo videos you would have seen a 100 watt solar panel. They've now switched it up to 200 watts. So the solar runs up here and all the connections go right down into the roof, down into the battery system, which is positioned right about here, down in a little box in the Kimbo. Over on the side here, we have a max air fan. And then if we look over here towards the back of the Kimbo, this is where you will find the exhaust and intake actually for the heating system. This Kimbo is using a Dickinson propane heater. If anyone is familiar with boats, you will find heaters like that in a boat. They have added a new sort of wind fairing around the top here that way if we are in a very breezy windy environment the wind has no chance of getting up and in there to put out that flame this thing is still very new to me and so far the weather has been pretty decent although it does get pretty rainy out here it's been raining for the past couple of days so once we're traveling around and really testing that thing out i'll let you know how it is 
Now finally coming around to the back again, here we of course have the door with a little window on the door. This is the compartment for the propane. They're now using two latches on this door, a little carabiner to lock it instead of just one latch like you may have seen on some of the older models. This door is weather sealed and here we have the whole propane compartment. This tank is ratcheted into place. You can get really easy access to the valve. And then this hose right here is for the shower drain. There is actually a way to shower inside of this camper, which we'll show you guys in a future video. So that hose tucks away there. If you do get water in here, there are little drain holes in each corner, so it's not something that you have to worry about. And this compartment is insulated as well. And then one more thing before we hit the inside, right here, this bright green hose is actually the drain for the sink. I currently just have that going into the bed of the truck, and if we do put water through the sink, it will just sort of drip out the back. If you want to collect your gray water, you could put a little bucket back here, stick that thing in a roto pack. But for the most part, I'm probably going to be using biodegradable soap, so... If I am washing my hands or something like that inside of the Kimbo, I shouldn't have to worry about putting toxic chemicals out into beautiful areas like this. Now, since the truck is so high and my girlfriend's legs are so short, we got a little step stool here. This makes getting into the Kimbo just a little bit easier. Here's a closer look at the door. Not just any old RV door. These things are all handmade and designed specific for the Kimbo. You have a little bit of a weather strip up here. That way, if it's snowing, snow that's sitting on here is not just going to fall inside of the camper. It's also going to keep rain out. Really nice little feature there. These doors do lock, but I haven't been using them because I have a locking tailgate. So if someone really wanted to get into the camper they would have a lot of stuff to go through until they got inside there's a deadbolt regular lock let's go in now as we come inside the camper i'm gonna go through this stuff pretty quickly because it's still new to us we're still trying to figure out how to organize everything and really how to live out of it but i'll just show you guys some of the initial features and then maybe in the next video we'll go through like a packing list all of the little knickknacks that i brought all of my camping gear and then i'll show you some tips and tricks on how we are managing to live in a small space like this so right inside of the entryway, we have a little bit of a drip pan here. This is now a bamboo piece of wood as opposed to the teak that you may have seen on some of the older Kimbos. There are very subtle differences between a newer model like this and some of the older ones. So if you're not familiar with the older videos that I've made, then a lot of these changes won't really stand out to you. But regardless, right over here, we have a little closet. So we have kid size hangers which fit this thing perfectly we tried full size hangers and they hung out just a little bit so here we have all of our jackets ashley has her purse down there and this is where we decided to put a little garbage bag on the outside of the closet this is what i'm considering the pantry we have all of these baskets that way you can see exactly what you have you're not going to leave something in a cabinet like you would find in a traditional rv and let it sit there and rot for a while that happens in my van all the time, so I really like this change here. Moving over just a little bit, we have a bench seat here, which is perfect for one person, maybe two people, if you wanna get close to each other. And this is where I have been editing videos on this little swing out table. I've been sitting here to edit. Also, you can have a drink, share a meal with a friend sitting on this seat over here. And then when you're not using it, it just stows away right like that. Now right down here is the power system that I talked about. This is an EcoFlow Pro, and I'm not gonna get into depth on this right now because it could basically have a video of its own, but it shows you how much time is remaining. It will show you when you are charging solar, your input, your output. It will show you all of the connected accessories. And then over here is an expansion port because there is yet another battery right back there. I'm gonna live with this thing a little while until I actually decide if it is enough power, if it's not quite enough power. I don't plan on modifying this at all right now. And I've heard good things about EcoFlow, so we'll cover that in a future video. To the right of the power system is the cute little AC that I told you guys about. If I end up not using this in the future, I could pull this out and then utilize the box that it sits in as a little bit more storage. But for now, I'm gonna leave that in because we gotta test everything out in this camper. Above that, we have some storage boxes. These came with the Kimbo. The two on the left-hand side are completely removable. So we have some towels and things like that in there. And then this one sort of sits open in a different direction and I've just been putting some random like nightstand stuff in here. And this box is actually fixed into place that way if you're bumping down a road, 
sort of like how it was getting in here. This box and the items inside are not gonna go flying out. On top here is just sort of some storage, kind of like a nightstand. So I put some grass on here. I saw my buddy Mark put grass on his and it just, it really just adds a little bit of a pop of color in here. It brings the outside inside and this thing is always going to be in some of the coolest places. This up here is also kind of new. They put it into this little structural support here. This is really the only structural support inside of the Kimbo. This sort of segments off the bedroom with the rest of like the living space and it's very subtle, but it makes this thing feel so dang cozy. Same thing with the entryway. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a lip here. That way, if you are kicking off muddy or rain covered clothing, you're throwing it on the floor here, that water will stay in this little basin and it's not going to get everywhere else inside of the camper. There's a little bit of a flare out here, which gives you sort of a feeling of separation between this space and this space, although it doesn't look like much, it really segments a tiny space like this and it's just so dang cool. I freaking love this thing. So over on this little partition here, we have a sensor telling us the humidity inside as well as the temperature. Speaking of humidity and temperature, right down here is a little dehumidifier, which I'm probably gonna put to the test. I also have another one. I got this one on Amazon, this one from Kimbo. And humidity in a small space like this is something that you really need to control. Now coming over to the right side of the camper, right here is a little bit of a step to get up into the bed area. There's a cushion right underneath here and I got this really nice sheepskin rug from an Overland sheepskin shop up in Breckenridge, Colorado. I got that idea from my friend Mark King who designed these things as well. So it's just a really nice little nook to sit in, read a book. Got a cushion there and you can just sort of admire the outdoors even if it's raining. Now while we are here, we might as well take a look at these windows. If I pull down from the top, we've got a blackout curtain and it gets very dark in here. If I pull up from the bottom, we have a bug screen. If I press the button inside of this little latch here, bug screen drops down. The windows have little locks on them, so you push them in as you turn them. Three latches on this window and then it pops outward, just like my van, that way you can allow some air to come in here even while the weather is bad. If it's snowing or raining, it's going to beat up on top of the window and go away from you. That way you're not getting water inside. I love these windows a lot, just like the ones on my van and I have not had any issues with them. You can pull that closed, turn the latches until you hear them lock and you're good to go. Now one more thing in this little nook area, if I lift up on the step here, this is where you will have access to the shower basin. So right now I have a little Dometic toilet in here. Have not used that yet, but I figured if we're gonna be living out of this thing, having a toilet is probably going to be a nice touch. I also have a shower system. This is the Geyser shower system. I've done a video on that in the past and we're gonna be using this thing quite a lot on the trip. So gonna be getting some hours and hours of testing on that thing. And then there's still some storage space in here. I just have some dirty laundry, a camp fan, and you could basically do whatever you want with this area. It would be cool to set this up as sort of a dog bed. Throw a little cushion in there because when you close this thing up, a little pup would have access through this little hole right here. So I think that'd be kind of neat. If you are using this for its shower functionality, it actually locks into place right over here. And then just above us, if we take a look at the Max Air fan, this is where you'll find little carabiners that may look very familiar to some of you guys out there. These are Travax carabiners with the Travax rivets through there using Travax leather. So Travax products in the Kimbo. Makes a whole lot of sense. So when we get around to showering in here, which we have not done yet, we'll hang our shower curtain from each of those hooks. You can turn the fan on a little bit to vent some of the moisture and humidity out. I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Now moving on to the kitchen on the right side here. I do have my one wheel in here as well. You will notice the tube that is running along the floor there. That is the drain for the shower pan. And then as we work our way up, right over here we have a Dometic fridge. Previously these were propane, but now if we take a peek in here, this thing is actually electric. You have all of the controls over on the side here. I'm still trying to figure out the right temperature. It's really just one, two, three, four, 
five different selections, I believe. It does have a light in there, and overall the space is pretty small. We're gonna be making some chicken fajitas here tonight, so we got everything loaded out. There is even a freezer space right up top, so small fridge, but I think it's plenty. On top here is just a little bit of counter space. I put a silicone mat there to sort of protect the wood. And then of course you have some storage. So right here I just have one of the wire baskets and those run all along the top of the camper as well. This is kind of a mess right now. Like I said, we haven't fully organized this thing yet, but I'll show you guys how we do that in a future video. Now the sink is not huge. It's not gonna be something that you're like doing dishes in, but if you're washing your hands or brushing your teeth, just simple water needs, you simply hand pump it. So really good for water conservation and that is pulling from a little tank right over here which you can pop out and fill up in a kitchen sink. You could fill it up at a rest stop. You could basically just dump gallons of water in there until it's full too. I just really love how simplistic this is. There's no 12 volt electric water pump. There really isn't anything that can go wrong with this. If it's going to be freezing in the winter and you have the Kimbo sitting in storage, just simply dump the water out. There's just one line running up here and you don't have to worry about anything. And now finally, right by the entryway is that Dickinson boat heater that I talked about. What's really cool about this design is that it intakes and exhausts all through this tube right here. So when you get that fire lit, this thing is going to heat up. That will allow it to suck air in and then exhaust more air out. It has a fan with a few different speeds. And firing this thing up at night inside of a really dark camper when it's cold outside adds a little bit of ambiance and it is super cozy in here because of that. The intake is found underneath here so it's going to intake fresh air that could possibly already be warmed up depending on the temperature in here and then the fan will blow across the top here. All of that propane in there is self-contained inside of this unit. So if you compare this to something like a buddy heater which has a lot of condensation and it's just not really safe. This thing is a complete opposite. All self-contained, no condensation, it's a dry heat. And because of the way they designed it to go inside of the Kimbo here, it's also very safe. Now finally, let's come up to the bed area where you will find a super comfortable full-size bed. I'm about five foot 10, five foot 11, and with my head on the pillows here, stretch completely out like a stick, I can't even touch the wall over here. You can find the actual dimensions of the Kimbo over on their website, but I believe it's maybe a little bit over six feet from end to end. Ashley and I have been sleeping in here for the past two nights and this mattress is super comfortable. This thing is sort of like a combination of a regular mattress and a box spring, so it's a little bit springy and bouncy, but it is so comfortable and I'm not just saying that. I actually really look forward to sleeping in this thing. Also, because of the view. With this unique design of the Kimbo and having a window right up front, you can almost kind of lay in bed and look up at the stars at night. If you're parking in areas that have sort of a picturesque view, it's just something that can't be put into words. Video never does justice, but could you guys imagine sleeping right here with a view like that and some stars at night? It's just so cozy in here. I freaking love this thing. Put that blackout curtain down if it's getting too bright in the morning and you can sleep the day away. I actually really enjoy sitting in the bed when we're hanging out inside of the Kimbo because it's sort of like a loft. I'm looking down on the kitchen and the living space right over here is of course where you're throwing all of your nightstand stuff at night. Because of the way this thing is designed, it just feels so much bigger in here because they're not using wood. All of the structural integrity of the ceiling and the walls comes from the design of the walls. So this thing is really deceptive. It looks kind of small on the outside and you would think that there's not a whole lot of space in here, but once you actually get to step foot in one in person, it will really, really change your perspective of how cool and how spacious these Kimbos really are. One last thing before we leave, right over here is a little controller for the light. Currently have this on 100% brightness. We can dip down to 50 or 25 or 10, which is perfect at night. And then you can even dim it down a little bit more click by click. 
can hit that to go back to 100. It also has some crazy modes to it, like a breathing mode and a strobe mode. I don't wanna get too crazy with that right now, but this is a cool way to control all of your lights. I put some Velcro on here to keep it over by the door and then also another strip over by the bed. So I'll move this into bed at night and then when it's time to go to sleep, simply turn the lights off. So that about wraps up the first look at my new Kimbo Camper Series 6, number 213. There's only 213 of these out on the road right now. And I am super thankful to be a part of this. You guys can expect a ton of Kimbo content over the next couple of weeks and over the next couple of years. This is going to be an ongoing project and I'm still gonna be doing typical truck stuff. We're gonna have the rooftop tent on there in the summertime when the weather is beautiful. But also if I wanna go a little bit further, the Kimbo is gonna be on the truck. I'm also not selling the van in any way, shape, or form. I still love the van, and that thing is just another vehicle in sort of my lineup. All of these vehicles and things like the Kimbo Camper allow me to travel around, see the country, explore a little bit further, and now with something like this, I can explore further in more remote areas, kind of like this, and do it super comfortably at the same time. Now I know you guys are going to have a ton of questions on this thing, so please leave some comments down below. Share this video with your friends if you like it, leave a thumbs up. I'm gonna try to answer everything as best as possible, but over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be living out of the Kimbo, we're gonna be traveling around, and you guys are going to sort of get an inside look at how different things work, like the water and the heater and the power system and how we manage to cook and live out of this thing. I will do some dedicated videos for those hot topic questions, probably for things like how it is to load and unload the Kimbo. I'll probably do a gear breakdown video here in the future too. The possibilities are pretty much endless and I am so stoked, so incredibly excited to be traveling around in this thing. So that is all that I had for today's video. If you guys are new here, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.